What is going on you daily go-getters? My name is Izzy and today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Thinkorswim and how to adjust your settings on there as well as setting up the most important part about trading is resistance and support levels. Um, if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Izzy. My videos previously were about making shoe reviews as well as doing uh, reselling and using bots and stuff like that. Uh, obviously guys, I, I changed my YouTube channel from uh, Sell Sneakers to Daily Go-Getter because I wanted to change my entire channel around. So um, if you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe to my videos. And most importantly, make sure you guys put on that bell notification to get notified every single time I turn on my YouTube videos. So let's get into the video guys. I'm going to be showing you guys from scratch on how I do my trades and how I basically do uh, my resistance and support level since I know a lot of people actually don't know how to use uh, Thinkorswim. So let's get right into it. Alright guys, so when you first create your account into Thinkorswim, you are going to see something similar to this. Um, you guys are going to notice that there's a lot of stuff going on. On the left side, you guys have your option buying power, the money worth that you have. I per purposely made a YouTube, oh, I'm sorry, not, not a YouTube, I made a, uh, a new account for you guys just to see how everything's going to look. Um, on the left side, you have your live news, your trader TV, which is an important, and your watch list that you want to have and stuff and etc. Um, when I get into SPY though, guys, the first thing that I want to do is give you these guys settings. If you guys want to stop the video, get into it, and make sure you guys are copying everything, uh, go ahead and do that. So first things first, guys, when you get into Thinkorswim, you have a gearbox right here, and that's going to be your settings tab. Uh, you want to go ahead and click on that. <clears throat> now, you're probably looking at your screen and you're saying, so for this example, I'm looking at SPY, right? Um, you want to go ahead and click on to time axis, right? The first thing that you want to do is click on the bars one right here for the expansion area and click on 50. Once that is done, guys, you guys want to go to the appearance section. You're going to click on that. Then you want to go ahead and click on fill up, fill down. And then, of course, you want to put the volume bars as color as the symbol tickers okay once that is finished guys you're pretty much done you want to go ahead and put apply and then click OK so now you're gonna be able to see on the right side where you're able to see sections and where you can actually do trend lines and do Fibonacci retracements and etc a lot of people don't understand but this is actually very crucial into understanding how your trend lines are gonna be that way your stuff isn't going to be ruined by you having no section like this. So it's always important to have this on the right side. And uh, yeah, you guys can see the difference between volume. Um, I'll be doing a separate video, guys, showing you guys my different indicators uh, when I do live trading and stuff like that. Um, but for now, I want to make this video strictly on support and resistance zones. So once that is done, guys, with your settings, you're going to go ahead now and uh, go on to the right side and click on time frame setup. Once you guys are in the time frame setup, there's going to be different things right here. Probably won't show for you guys, but if you want, um, mine's going to do this right here. You want to go on customize list, right? And the time frames that I have uh, are actually going to be the three year weekly, the one year daily, the 180, uh, 180 days, four hour, the 10 day, 30 minutes, and the 10 day, 15 minute mark. Uh, make sure you guys stop the video really quick and save this onto your favorites, guys. If you guys do not know how to add these into your favorites, all you really have to do is click on this again. I go to time frame. You go to the intraday one. You could change it to 180 days for that example if you wanted to. And the uh, four hour, okay? So that would be one of them. If you want to add it to your favorites, all you have to do is click on the mini star on the bottom left. And that will automatically save. Um, if you want to do it from the daily aspect, you click on this. Click on, let's say two years and click on the weekly if you want to do that and then press OK but the settings that I recommend you guys doing of course is gonna be these so like I said again one year one day 180 day four hour 10 day 30 minute and the 10 day 50 minute uh, you also want to have the weekly one so which is a three year weekly okay so starting from the beginning I'm gonna go ahead and start from a higher time frame so for this prime example guys we are gonna be going to do the resistance and support levels for spy so you want to go ahead and click on the three year weekly and okay so this is how I would set up my first um, what is it time things whatever my uh, my support and resistance so you're probably wondering okay how do I set up my settings so first thing is you want to go on the bottom right here it's gonna be your active tool th mark thing called and then you want to click on the price level 
once you get to the price level guys you're just gonna randomly put this anywhere for right now okay so we're gonna go ahead and do that we want to change the settings and make sure that your settings are completely the same as mine okay so once you make a mark uh, yours is gonna be a little bit different than mine you're gonna right click go to edit properties and then this is what you want to set up your thing so you want to make sure that the left extension is on your right extension is on you do not need to show the name if you don't want to I personally don't do that uh, and of course um, you want to make sure that this specifically is on the right side okay guys this is going to be showing this number right here for your support slash resistance zones and that's going to be major key levels where you want to see potential bounces or see a potential downside or upside depending on if it's support or resistance okay so once that's done you also want to change the style i personally like holding mine into like these the smaller areas uh, my width is going to be one and then you can always change your colors we're going to talk about the colors right now, but specifically for this one right now on the three gear weekly, we are going to make this green. Okay, guys, we're going to make that one specifically green. So you're going to click save as default. Okay. So once you save that as default, you're going to click. Okay. So we're going to remove this one just for right now. If you guys don't know how to remove a drawing set, you're going to go right click and then click on remove drawing. Once that is done. Okay. When you are looking at a graph from this angle, you want to make sure that the wicks below the candlesticks, which are very important indicators, you want to make sure that that is touching several times. So for a prime example on this one specifically, okay, I am going to be setting a uh, support right here. So there's one here, okay? You're probably wondering. So there's one, like there's a couple of touches right here. So that's one, two. You guys can see that, right? And then important one will be probably around here. So that's two. Another one would be right here. Like I said, you just want two touches on the higher time frame. So you can see one right here and then another wicks from right here. Okay, guys. So that's why that is so important to read this, the candlesticks, uh, especially the candle wicks on the bottom and even on the top. So for the top frame one, obviously we have one right here. That seems to be a major resistance zone. Uh, and then this was also support at one point. So you guys can see from right there, there's one touch right here of the wick, two, three, four. So that's a major one right there, specifically the 457.20 level. Um, of course, you want to do the all-time high, which is very important. And, of course, we'll do one right around here because we're about that level. Uh, another one will be somewhere around here. 368. And that level, this level, and this level. So I won't go down too far, guys, because I don't think SPY can potentially reach all the way down to the 320 level. Right now, obviously, in the market, we are in a bearish sentiment right now. Um, we do have a potential recession occurring with the whole world economic things going on. So I wouldn't be surprised if we probably reach around the 368 level just based upon this uh, information that we have. But um, anyways, that's besides the point. So um, once I'm done making my levels, guys, and you guys seen it right here live for SPY indicating, okay? These are the, my price levels for the three-year weekly, okay? So once that is done, now you are going to change your time frame, okay? So once you're done changing your time frame, you are going to go to the one-year daily, okay, guys? So once you get into the one-year daily, this is what you want to start doing now, too. You're going to make the same exact things, but now you're going to change the color on it. So let me show you what I mean. So for this prime example, you can see that we have a lot of support around this level as well. So I would right-click that, right? Well, since we are on a different time frame, which is the one-year, one-day now, we're going to right-click on it, edit properties, and we're going to change that to red now, okay? So once we got that, now we know, okay? So now we have the red one right there. Uh, we could do this right around here. Right-click that. Um, right around here. And remember, guys, I'm just right-clicking and turning it to red. That's all I'm doing for different time frames, okay? So you can see that we have some type of support right around here, this level. And I think that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Let me double check. No, one right here, too. 
All right, so once we are done with that time frame, guys, now we're going to switch it up again. So we're going to go on to the 180-day, uh, 4-hour, okay? So as you guys can see now, looking at the touches from the prior uh, resistance and support levels that I made from the other time frames, you guys can clearly see that there is potential bounces on different time frames, right? Specifically, guys, what do we see right here? So we can see that this is a major area right here specifically so the ones that I can see a major support and resistance zones I'm automatically okay just by the prior 180 days just by looking at this right we can see that right here we also have another zone right um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this real quick here so now we're gonna do the same thing again of course we're gonna make it right but we're gonna right click on this one now right and we're gonna change this one to yellow all right we're gonna do that of course that's another one right there um so yeah so like for example when you're looking at the weekly right let's say that's one two three four five six seven eight nine uh ten days or something like that so every single candlestick right here is representing uh four hours okay of, of 180 days so these are 180 days right every candlestick is four hours okay that's the same thing that correlates to the other thing when you change it up but um from this standpoint right here guys uh, I'm gonna start making my resistance and support zones, but I'm gonna show you something that I noticed right now And I kind of explain it to you guys so you guys have a better understanding, but let me go ahead and do this real quick So right click make that into yellow Okay Same thing goes to here Probably set it right here. Yep Right click and like I said, you guys can do this for any single ticker, guys. This is how you are literally just setting up support and resistance zones since I know a lot of people that are new to trading don't understand it or how to do it. And I'm going to explain to you why this is so crucial and why it's so important when you guys are option trading or even doing your regular day trades if you guys are just trading shares. Um, like I said, option trading is completely hard, guys. I won't say that's easy because it's not. Uh, but it's something definitely where you can make a lot of money if you master this skill. Um, like I said, it's not for everyone, but to the people that do want to learn this uh, skill, I absolutely give you guys credit because I've been trading for about two and a half years now, and it's been a journey so far. So I'm super extremely blessed to be in the position where I am to be able to help people and educate people on how to do trading. So um, hopefully this video helps you guys, and if it does, once again, guys, make sure you guys do me a favor and drop that uh, like and subscribe button. I appreciate it. Um, so there's another one right here. So this is pretty much another one obviously we can't do it because we're over it but um so yeah so let's continue let's go on so now we're going to go on to the uh what was this the 10 day 30 minute mark okay so now we can see strictly from here we're going to right click edit properties and we're going to make this one make it light blue Alrighty, so if I were you guys too, if you guys want to change the colors and stuff, you guys can. But make sure you guys write down on a piece of paper which um, different interval colors you guys are using. So like for example, right now I'm using the light blue, right? So on a piece of paper, I'd be like, okay, on the 10 day, 30 minute mark, I'm writing my blue, my light blue, okay? So these are basically for like scalps and stuff like that and even using your uh, day trades. But like I said, I'll explain a little bit further once I'm done charting all this stuff so you guys can understand what I mean. So whoops, right click, edit properties, and make that blue. Like I said, this is just a review process. It is going to take a little while, but of course you want to be kind of, um, actually you want to make sure you're kind of accurate with every single thing, right? Because if you guys are scalp trading or doing your day trades, you want to make sure that you see potential bounces in these areas or profit taking. So yeah. So let me go ahead and keep it going. Edit properties. Make that one blue for you guys. See if there's any other ones. Well, there is another one right around this level. But all right, so looks like we're pretty much done when it comes to these zones around here. You could put one right here if you wanted to. Edit properties. Make that one blue. Let's see what else. Right here is another one. Alrighty. All right, guys, so once you are done with your uh, support and resistance zones, this is something that's going to look like on your screen now. Um, this is where it gets really, really important. So looking at a higher time frame, okay, this is actually from the 10-day, 30-minute mark. We'll start off with this one. 
we can see that there is a lot of support okay within the last 10 days this support level right here the 385.23 area seems to be like there was always a potential bounce here okay you guys can see it because it bounced not once but twice right so in my personal opinion guys automatically just by looking at this right here i would change this one to a specific different color because i can tell that this is a major support area so if you wanted to you could show the name right click on the right side and i would say major support level this past week oh i'm sorry name is too long major support level i'll just put some major support level okay so i click on this i want to change the color to let's just say let's make it purple click on okay okay major support level at 385.23 um is another level right around here for the resistance in the past week would be yeah around this zone right around here so i actually forgot to mark this one so let me go ahead and do that real quick uh where was it yeah right around here so edit properties make it purple now that one's gonna be resistance right major resistance click on okay so you guys can see that the 393.29 area we were resisting a lot we were also resisting on this level too during the pre-market so i would also do this right click major resistance and just remember looking at the time frames guys it might be different resistance or support zone so for this prime example obviously we can see that there was major resistance on this level right but at some point this was also a uh, support level so if we go back here you guys can see that it was major support uh that was what one two three four five six seven days ago right here you guys can tell that was support level since it was bouncing above it so you guys can see that it went up from that level but we were making newer lows and stuff like that but that's why it really just depends on where you're looking at and stuff like that and for some reason it's not showing the property so oh yeah i forgot to put a show on the right side click on okay show on the right side click on okay so now you can see major resistance major resistance zones right you're playing that off by just looking at that um and then you also since we're right around here uh you also want to put major support right so if we only have one major support level we also kind of have one right here we decided to bounce back down so that'll be another crucial area but for right now you guys can see from this uh, standpoint that this is pretty much uh, major support levels um if you want to verify that you guys can go ahead and go back into the different old time frames and like i said um you guys can see that this is also a major support level right here uh you guys can tell by the major candle wick so let me tell you what i mean by this uh, when you're looking at this right here, guys, look how much of the week, uh, wick is showing right here. Especially this one right here. So there was major support level that went insane. This was really volatile this day. It went 385 all the way back up to the 403 level. Uh, I think this is when Powell was speaking, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, you also want to pay attention to something else, which I'll talk in another video. But uh, for this prime example right here, you guys can see that there is a ton of support, especially on the 381.21 level, right? So you click on Edit Properties. After that, I will make this purple, right? Because that's a major support zone. Say major support zone again, right? And I put that on the right side, and I'll click on OK. So that's a major one, right? Two major support levels are right here. So anything between, we're probably going to be going up and down between that area. Um, so once you go do that, you can also go back down to the one gear daily and see it again. So look at it. We're absolutely rejecting that level again, so you guys can... Uh, confirm that that is two of the most uh, perfect uh, major support levels from these base two levels right here the 385.23 and the 381.27 um, so yeah so you just want to look at different time frames like that you guys can tell that this is also a major resistance zone right here 395.72 I won't put it on there but you want to kind of zoom in and just see where that might be so um, it came up on right here so let me go ahead and put that actually because that's actually a really good point right here so right click edit properties and then we could just make that i forgot which one we did it first i think it was with uh bread i think so we'll make it red so now when you guys are day trading this is what i mean in my group chat so if you guys are new to my group chat or aren't in my group chat um i run a group called next level trading guys um let me see if i can pull it up real quick if it wants to uh pretty much guys i have let's see uh hold on where is my stuff oh server settings so I have over 210 members right now, guys, currently. Um, this literally started about a couple of months ago, and I literally show you guys how to trade. 
All my information is going to be posted on the description. It is completely for free, guys. I show you guys my pre-market stuff, my daily watch list, my day trades on what I get in and how I do my stuff like that. I do live trade Zoom calls every single morning, guys. So if it's something that you guys are interested, make sure you guys join my Discord group. It will be located in the description down below. Um, like I said, I do daily Zoom calls every single day, and I also do Zoom calls in the morning before pre-market and actually do live trading. So, um, yeah, make sure you guys join that if you want to learn how I do my trades and see me live trade. So, yeah. Anyways, back to the video, guys. So, when I am trading, I am a scalp trader. If you guys do not know what a scalp trader is, it is when you are doing a position or staying a position within 2 to 10 minutes maximum. Sometimes it could be 15 minutes, but usually I'm in within 2 to 5 minutes, 2 to 10 minutes, depending on the momentum of the stock and how the volume is increasing or decreasing and stuff like that. So um, just keep that in mind, okay? Uh, and then from there, I don't know why this box just came up like that. Uh, let's see. There you go, okay. So when I'm looking to become a, a scalp trader, obviously right now you guys can see that the pre-market, we are rejecting the 390.97 area, right? Uh, when we're looking at that though, um, there's different things that I'm also peeping. So right now it doesn't matter because it's Saturday right now. Um, there's nothing that's open. Of course, the stock market is closed. I won't pay attention to this until pre-market, which is at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, the stock market opens up at 8.30 a.m. my time. So of course, 30 minutes to decipher and see what levels I'm making and stuff like that. Um, once I'm done, though, um, I'm going to go to the previous thing. So let's go talk about what happened today. So obviously, uh, Friday. This is Friday, okay? This was literally yesterday. When I'm looking to trade, right, there's another time. For instance, I am a scalp trader. I also like to do uh, this, this. So I click on intraday and click on the one day. No, we can't actually even do. Let's do the five day. Five day and the three minute mark, okay? So anyone that is a scalp trader, which is something that I do recommend you guys doing to make fast money and could be done within the first 30 minutes, um, I recommend you guys doing the five-day, three-minute, okay? Put that in there. Press OK. Now, just by looking at this, guys, there's a couple of things that I'm looking at, okay? Uh, first things first, I'm looking to see what the pre-market high is and the pre-market low. Um, that is very important to see where I'm going to buy calls and where I'm going to put puts depending on the market sentiment and seeing what type of news is also occurring on that specific day. Um, so, for example, when I am looking, let's go back to my other screen real quick. I'm going to go ahead and click on the U.S. Economics Calendar, okay? I'll put this down in the description. Um, this is what moves the market and gives the market sentiment, whether it's going to be volume coming in or it's going to be a major sell-off or some type of news that it's affecting the stock market. So, for example... Um, today is the 21st, so we'll see what happened on Friday. There was nothing that was scheduled on Friday, right? Um, so let's just say for Monday, the upcoming week, we can see that Monday there's nothing going on, but Tuesday we actually have the PMI information for manufacturing for the S&P Global US. Uh, we also have the new home sales. And then Wednesday we have the durable good order. So depending on this specific information, guys, we are either going to see a lot of volume to the upside or we're going to see a major sell-off depending on the numbers that we see on the period. So make sure that you guys are obviously always watching this every single day before you trade. Um, there's a couple other things that I also like to do before my trading, but I'll do that in a different video. But this one specifically is a reason why it's so important to pay attention to because it is going to move the market. So going back onto this, guys, uh, you guys are going to see, like I was saying, um, as a skull trader, I like to go in and out of positions. Um, the reason why I was bearish on Friday for a lot of reasons would be because of the simple fact that we never got above the pre-market high. So for prime example, um, we can see that there's major resistance here, right? So if I was making my daily watch list, the thing that I would do for specifically for SPY would have been, okay, guys, grab SPY calls above the 394.60 area, okay? Um, when people get into calls, though, sometimes, and even if you're scalping it, um, you want to make sure you pay attention to your indicators. Like I said, I'll be talking that to a different video, but as of right now, just by looking at this information, um, I am going to be bearish. And the only reason why I'm saying I'm going to be bearish is because look at this huge di uh, giant wick right here. Okay, that is obviously a bear sentiment movement. Um, there's also other indicators, like I said, I'll be talking about. But specifically, just based upon that and based upon uh, it not reaching the absolute uh, major resistance zone, which is a 394.60 area, I wouldn't touch the stock for a cause, okay? So the minute that it did go up, right, um, this is why it's important to have different time frames on your stuff. So let's just say, in this prime example, that SPY decided to go up and it went over the 394.19 area. Um, if you wanted to scalp trade it, you would also take profits around the 394.60 area. 
uh, then your next profit taking would have been uh, 394.99 or 395. So those are your major um, profit taking areas, okay? Um, once that's done, um, you're pretty much done for the trading depending on how many contracts that you bought. But that's why it's so important to have that. Or as I like to say in my group chat, uh, start trimming. Trimming means when you start selling your contracts slowly. So let's say I bought four or let's just say for this prime example, I bought three contracts, right? Um, I bought call contracts at the 395 uh, strike price. And I would take profits, the first one around here, I saw more momentum coming in, I would take the second profit on my second contract here, and last but not least, I will have the third one right here. So that's why it's also important to have a game plan into taking your profits and sticking with it. It doesn't matter if SPY runs up to the 397 area or whatever it might be, you took your profits at the time that you wanted to, and as everyone likes to say, no one ever got broke taking profits. So just keep that in mind, guys, all right? Even if you only make $10, 15 $20, it doesn't matter. Everything about trading is all about patience and compound interest, okay? Little bit of um, profits are going to make your account blow up. So that's always a good thing. You want to take small mini profits every single day. That way you do uh, compound interest. And that's going to make you an overall great trader. You also want to have stop losses. If you guys don't know how to do a stop loss, I'll make that in a different separate video. But as of right now, I am constantly just strictly talking about support and resistance zones and how I take my profits. So... Um, like I said, I was bearish on this day because of the simple fact on Friday yesterday, which was the 20th of May, um, I saw this major candlestick and it never got above the pre-market high, which was the uh, 394.60 area. Uh, we can see we had a lot of choppiness right here. That's why I tell a lot of folks that usually when I begin my trading, I don't like to begin until... Uh, 9 a.m. in the morning. So like I said, the stock market opens up around 8.30 a.m. If I want to scalp trade or begin scalp trading, I usually start realistically between 8.45 or I start at 9 a.m. in the morning to see the direction of where it's going to go. So you guys can see in the morning, we had a lot of chops. So when I'm looking at this, when I zoomed in, um, we can see right here we have a lot of um, consolidation, okay? So this is why I was alerting my group chat. Uh, we were between these zones. So we were probably like stuck around here for a while, right? So I wanted to have gotten calls actually above this area too. We can actually make that a resistance zone too if you wanted to do that. Uh, we can go ahead and do that real quick. So we would have just do that, all right? So um, just based upon this information, like I said, we were consolidating for a while. Uh, we didn't see any type of upside uh, until we started looking at the volume. And of course, volume is going to be your best friend, which I'll talk in another video. But of course, you had to wait. And around at 9 o'clock, look what happened, guys. We broke through our consolidation zone to the downside, okay? And guess what happened again? We had another zone of consolidation going on, but we can see that we're making no, uh, lower lows and we're making a trend line basically, guys. So you guys can see that right there. We have one consolidation zone, broke down, had another one, and broke down a shit ton. And then, of course, we had another consolidation zone right around here. So once we saw that, um, we saw the major support level, which was the 385. It actually broke down even more. We can see that because look at the volume stick. We have two of the volume sticks showing pretty much a major sell-off right here, guys. So this is why it's so important to have these colors on there so you guys can see the volume and on there to see um, which direction the market is going to be going. Obviously, when you're looking at this, though, we're making uh, lower lows and higher, uh, higher lows. So you guys can see, look, at it. it's a downtrend. Look at that. The trend is your friend, as a lot of people like to say. So... This is how you could have told that this was going to be a major sell-off. But, of course, uh, looking at this as well, we also went back up. Let me go back. Hold on. Where did I put it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yeah. So, you guys can see we were also consolidating around this zone. We also have uh, different time frames, too. If you guys wanted to do this, like I said, in the five-day, three-minute mark, you guys can also go ahead and put resistance zones if you wanted to, if you're a scalp trader or whatever it might be. But um, then we saw a bullish sentiment when we got to the major support area zone, which is the all-time low for SPY in the past literally, what, 15 days? We reached 381.27 or the 380.54. So uh, this is your lowest. So I'll go ahead and just do that, make another support and resistance zone. So 380.54 was our lowest, which is absolutely insane. Uh, from there, you guys started seeing that we had momentum building up, but we also started going back down. So I would have waited because there's another consolidation zone between this area. But you guys can see that it's bouncing between these lines, okay, for a while. Then suddenly, guess what happens, guys? We break out of this support zone or this resistance zone because now it's not a resistance. So we broke it at the 383.97, and look what happened. We went to the upside. So 
Uh, all the gains or all the losses that we took from the early morning session until 12.30, uh, we started gaining momentum again. And finally, we broke out and gained all the stuff that we lost. So um, we weren't down too bad, but that was a major support bounce level at the 380.54. You guys can see that volume is actually increasing, showing you guys a uh, bullish uh, market for the short term. So... That's where you want to take your profits, guys, and stuff like that. But this is why I'm telling you guys it's so important on patience and looking at different consolidation zones and waiting until a breakout occurs. Uh, this was insanely uh, a great setup for this. Um, if you guys don't know how to read candlesticks and stuff like that, I'll make a separate video on that as well. But this is pretty much the basics, guys, on how I do my um, support and resistance zones and how I take my profits as a scalp trader. Um, if you are a day trader, you're holding positions for a couple of hours. But of course, on Fridays, you don't want to do that if you are playing zero DTE. A lot of people that are new for option trading, I do not recommend you guys doing zero DTE due to the fact that you guys are not that knowledgeable yet and you guys aren't familiar with the Greek the Greeks on the options. Uh, I'll be doing another specific video on that, showing you guys what the Greeks mean and how time is a value to come on to the uh, options premiums and stuff like that. So let's just say, for example, on Friday, right, you bought a put, uh, let's say, um, for the most part, you actually would have been printing, but if you bought a call option, of course, the thing would be uh, worthless because it never went upwards until the end. So, I mean, you could have scalp traded this and made a shit ton of money around this level right here. Uh, but yeah, so... This is pretty much it for the video, guys, showing you guys how I do my support and resistance zones. Um, like I said, I prefer being a, a scalp trader. I don't like holding too many positions. And, of course, I do have a 9-to-5 job, so I got to make sure that I'm in and out within the first 30 minutes of the market. Um, the best times to trade, and I'll put this right here on the screen for you guys, would be uh, from 8.45 to 9 a.m., then we have 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., which is the lunch time. So most people are actually trading on their lunch times. And of course, last but not least, which is our also our favorite one, would be Power Hour. So this prime example, guys, Power Hour is from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., which is an hour before market close. Okay, you guys can literally see from right here, uh, from 2:20. Okay, this is around yeah 2:20 right here. Um, we saw a scalp trade to the upside. So imagine this. This is from Power Hour. From Power Hour for Spy. Uh, we saw a bullish sentiment going on. So you guys could literally see that right there. Um, if you were to get calls at around this level, your first profit taking would have been right here, 385.23. Next one would have been at the 387.08 level. Uh, third would have been 388.70. And then last but not least, 388.49. So uh, these are so important, guys, and that's why you guys should have your support and resistance zones set up in different time frames. If you guys are even looking at the lower time frames and want to go even back further in, you guys are more than welcome to do it. Uh, like I say, too, I do not re recommend people trading on the one-day, uh, one-minute mark. That is the most horrible technique ever because it's just going to give you anxiety. And trading is also a psychological um, event that occurs when you guys are actually trading. So... Uh, to play it safe, five day, three minute mark, five day and five minute mark are going to be your best friends for scalp trading. Uh, but that's it for today's video. If you guys found this to be very helpful, like I said, please make sure you guys like the video. If you guys have questions, make sure you guys contact me actually on my Instagram page, guys. I'm going to be showing you guys right now. So my Instagram page is called Izzy Legit. I also own, like I said, my business on my Discord called Next Level Trading. Uh, I do appreciate you guys following me on my personal Instagram, which like I said, Izzy Legit. And of course my business on next level trading so um if you guys want to stay up to date or have any questions make sure you guys drop uh questions down in the comments section or join my uh, discord that's going to be located down below and you guys can personally dm me or ask me on the questions tab right here on our discord group uh pretty much answering your guys questions so on our discord group uh when you're looking at it we're going to have different sections of course we have uh the daily watch list the day trades and uh, hold on, let me show you guys. I'm sorry about this. We have the daily watch list, our day trades, swing alerts, scalping alerts, crypto room to any of those that want to do crypto. Uh, we do have valuable information for our training resources, like the terminology, uh, what all this stuff means. Call, of course, means going above. Uh, puts mean going below. Um, in the money, out of the money, at the money, intrinsic value, time, and etc. So um, we have all this stuff. If you guys want to understand bullish and bearish sentiments on candlesticks, this is going to be your best friend. I tell everyone in my group chat to make a copy of this and print it out and put it in a binder. That way you guys can understand and study how technical analysis works. Uh, like I said, I'll be talking about this on a separate video, but we have a lot of great information on here. Uh, we do have a questions tab somewhere. I can't remember where I put it. Uh, yeah, questions. So this is where you guys want to ask me questions. A lot of people put uh, qu or have questions and want to ask me stuff. So I'm always active on Discord 
Discord, guys. Um, so don't hesitate to ask me anything in the, the questions tab. So like I said, make sure you guys join my session. And most importantly, um, hopefully this video helped you guys. And I'll be making another video uh, probably this week showing you guys another method that I use. Anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching my video. And have a great, awesome weekend. Have a good one, guys.